In this lesson, we're going to have a look at how to approach trigonometry in triangles if variables are given. We're immediately going to get started on an example. In the diagram, angle C1 is alpha, B2 beta, angle D is theta, side BDx and ABY. Side AB is perpendicular to BC, and we are asked to prove that y is equal to x times sin theta times tan alpha divided by sin of beta plus theta. In lesson 4, I mentioned that it's always good to start in the triangle where you have a side length and then work your way to the triangle where there's a dimension that you need to calculate. Especially when variables are given, I will add a step and say start by determining all the possible angle sizes. Because here we only have variables, all our angle sizes will be abstract values. In triangle ACB, we can calculate angle A by subtracting the other two angles in that triangle from 180 degrees, and that will be the 90 degrees at angle B1 and alpha at angle C1. This can be simplified to 90 minus alpha. Similarly, angle C2 can be calculated by subtracting from 180 the other two angles in triangle BCD, and that is beta and theta. Here, I would advise you to not multiply that minus in, but keep it just like that. The reason for that is that both these angles are variables and cannot be simplified any further. This will help you to identify reduction formulas later on. In this question, we are asked to prove that y is equal to a specific ratio. In reality, they are asking us to determine the length of side y, and they are specifying what our answer should be. To determine side y, we need to start in a triangle where we already have a side length given. This means we will start our calculations in triangle BCD because in this triangle we already have side X. In this triangle we are then going to calculate the common side which will then help us to also be able to work in the top triangle and therefore we are going to start determining the length of CB. In triangle BCD we have a side and all three the angles, and that means we can work with the sin rule. We already have a complete pair in side and angle C, and our second pair will be angle and side D, because we want to determine lowercase d or side CB. Because we are determining a side, I'm putting the sides in the numerator, and the angles in the denominator of my equation. Next, we can substitute in everything that we have, and even though this might look confusing, all the basic concepts stay the same with variables. We want to get CB alone on the left, and that is why we multiply with sin theta on the right. For the denominator, it is now also important to remember your reduction formulas. The denominator we have sin of 180 minus an angle. 180 minus is in the second quadrant and that is where sin is positive. Therefore we can say that it is the same as sin of the acute angle which in this case is beta plus theta. And even though this is not a pretty answer this is a value for side CB. Therefore, we can now go and work in triangle ACB to determine side Y. Triangle ACB is a 90 degree triangle, and that means I can choose to either work with one of my trig rules or a trig ratio. I'm choosing to use a trig ratio, and I'm going to work from the perspective of angle C1. That means I want to calculate the opposite side, and we just calculated the adjacent side, and these two together form the tan ratio. So here, the tan ratio for angle alpha is the opposite side, which is y, 
divided by the adjacent side, which is CB. And to solve side Y, I'm going to multiply with CB on the left-hand side. My final step is then to substitute CB with the value that we calculated earlier for CB. Once you've done this, you've finalized the proof that they have asked you to do. Question 2. Calculate the value of y if x is now given as 100 meters, alpha 60 degrees, beta 40 degrees, and theta 35 degrees. After all those calculations in question 1, question 2 is actually very simple. In question 1, we were already given the abstract value for side y. So even though you might not have been able to prove it, you are now allowed to use it. All we need to do now is substitute these values into the original variable spaces. Your final step is then to put this into your calculator, so make sure that you know how to use your calculator properly. Y will then be 102,85 meters. Before doing another example, I'm going to remind you about the definitions for angles of elevation and angles of depression. Both these angles are measured from the horizontal line. The angle of elevation is measured from this horizontal line upwards, and the angle of depression is from this line downwards. It is then very important to realize that you can use alternating angles. This is because all horizontal lines are parallel, and a horizontal line can be drawn in any way when it is needed. Example 2. From the top of a tower CD, the angle of depression to an observer standing at A is alpha. I'm reminding you that an angle of depression is measured from the horizontal downwards, and in this case downwards to the observer at point A, and therefore C1 is alpha. The angle of elevation to the top of the tower from observer B is beta, and again measured from the horizontal, this time upwards to the top of the tower, we measure angle beta. And the height of the tower is x meters. So in this example, we have a tower CD and two observers, one standing at point A and one at point B. The question, show that the distance between the two observers can be expressed with the following ratio. The distance between the two observers is then side AB, which is what we need to calculate. Once again, I'm going to start by determining all the possible angle sizes in the sketch. Firstly, I can use alternating angles to say that angle A is also alpha. Next, I can use interior angles of triangle CBD to calculate the size of C3. Simplified, this will be 90 minus beta. Next, using angles on a straight line, I can calculate angle B2, and that will be 180 minus beta. And then angle C2 can either be determined using interior angles of a triangle or the fact that angle C is 90 degrees and simplified that will give me beta minus alpha. It may be that you don't need all these angles in your calculations but it does make it easier if you already calculated the angles. So to calculate side AB we need to determine in which triangle to start. That will be triangle CBD, because this is the triangle where we already have a side length. This triangle we are going to determine side CB, which then also forms part of triangle CAB on the left. Triangle CBD is a 90 degree triangle, which means we can choose to either use trig ratios or one of the trig rules. I'm going to use a trig ratio and I'm going to work from the perspective of angle B1. This means we already have the opposite side as x, 
and we want to determine the hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse form the sin ratio. This is the sin ratio of angle beta, and that will be the opposite side, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is bc. Next, to solve bc, I first need to multiply with bc on the left-hand side, and then divide by sin beta on the right-hand side. Now we have an abstract value for side BC, and this means we can work in triangle ABC. Triangle ABC is not a 90-degree triangle, and that means I can only use either the sin or the cos rule. Here we have one side and all the angles, and that means once again we are going to work with the sin rule. We have a complete pair of side and angle, and then to determine side AB, we already calculated the angle across from it earlier. I want to determine side AB, so I put that in the numerator on sin of the angle across from it, which is beta minus alpha, and that is equal to the other side, which is BC, over sin of the angle across from that, which is alpha. To solve AB, I'm going to multiply with the sin of beta minus alpha on the right hand side. And now we can substitute the abstract value for BC that we calculated earlier. So AB will be BC, which is x over sin beta, multiplied by sin of beta minus alpha divided by sin of alpha. And here we've proven that that ratio is the distance between the two observers. In questions with variables, the questions become more and more abstract. That is why it's important to have all your previous knowledge rounded off perfectly. You need to be able to do interior angles of a triangle, angles on a straight line, alternating angles, all your geometry, as well as your trig ratios, and then your two new trig rules.